Hi, viewers. Welcome to another edition of Marie Clinic Live. How are you today? I hope you are enjoying your weekend. It's another opportunity to see um, another day and a new week. And we are grateful to God for life. And we are grateful to God for family and um, for marriage. I will start by um, welcoming us again to another edition of Mary Clinic Life. Welcome. Um, I remain your host, Moralaya and Ookuti. I would also like to say thank you to all members of Mary Clinic. Thanks to everyone. I really do appreciate all the members of Mary Clinic. In fact, we are wonderful people. Um, during the week, someone um, was chatting with me and the person kept saying, wow, ma'am, you have such exceptional and highly intelligent people on Mary Clinic that their comments, that there are some people on Mary Clinic that their comment is wow. Their comment you know, send something down their spine and they could tell that, wow, this is a truth nugget. I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you. I can't start mentioning names right now, but I promise during our one year anniversary, I will try as much as possible to celebrate a few of us who have been consistent, whose comments are always I mean, truthful and life-changing. I would like to say thank you. Thank you to everyone. I mean, for always participating, always commenting. You don't know the enormity of the work we are doing. You don't know the impact we are making on people's lives. You don't know how many wives are gradually changing because of some of the comments we put out there. You know, some of the things we say, some wife will go back and say, hmm, I saw this on Mary Clinic. In fact, there are people now that are always chatting me up and saying, mm, I saw this on Mary Clinic and I'm beginning to make adjustments. You know, some men too will say, Ah, ma'am, thank you so much. That thing you put up that day, when I read all the comments, I just told myself that from henceforth, I will not be talking down at my wife again. I will not be doing this to my wife again. So for me, that is fulfillment. Knowledge changes. Um, things you know knowledge can be transformational and this little way we are doing it you don't know the impact that you are making on family on marriages on on lives of people society at large and i can assure you that even nations will profit from what we are doing for marriage clinic so i would like to say thank you and thank you for also inviting people to join marriage clinic you know and almost every day now we have close to an average of 100 persons, you know, joining Mary Clinic newly. And I know that many of us have been inviting people, you know, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you so much for uh, always inviting someone. So right away, I would like to celebrate all our new members, all the people joining Mary Clinic newly this week. I would like to celebrate you. This week alone, we had nothing less than 300 to 400 people joining Mary Clinic. Woo! I'm celebrating you all and I'm saying thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, I can assure you that here you are going to get value because we try as much as possible to put out value out there. And I, I, I believe that all the information we are putting out there will be beneficial to you, to your partner, to your marriage, and to um, your family as a whole. So I would like to welcome all of you. So please, you should also try and invite someone to join Mary Clinic. So the next thing is, wow, just like that, our one year anniversary is near. It's in fact, it's right um, around the corner. So in two days time, come Tuesday, um, the 19th of May, Mary Clinic will be clocking one year old. Woo! So we are happy about this milestone. We are excited because I remember how we started. We started, you know, it was like a baby step, but today we can say, wow, we've, we've achieved, you know, quite a lot within that one year. So I would like to encourage every one of us, please, this um, anniversary is a unique one in the sense that in just our one year old, 
you know, we, we are privileged to have um, such impactful um, speakers coming to speak to us. And I want you to know that it's an opportunity for you to learn, to unlearn, to relearn. Learning will never have an end. So, so long you can learn, I can assure you that transformation will keep taking place in your mind. And before you know it, it will impact on your actions and your behavior and on your character as a whole. So please do make it a date with us 19th, um, 20th, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of May. From Tuesday till Saturday, we're going to be um, having all these programs you know, run every day by 6 p.m., except the one we are having on Saturday will be starting by 5 p.m. Please do me a favor. Do invite someone. Keep sharing the flyers. Keep sharing the flyers as much as you can invite people to join because there is something new they are going to be learning you know from these programs and from this conference so before i go to today's topic i would like to also mention that um during the week quite a number of people have been chatting me up inboxing me saying oh mom um what can we do to support this program or oh, what can we do as our own part you know, in, in the program that is coming up, how can we help, how can we support? Now, left for me, honestly, left for me, I can keep going like this and not think about, oh, um, do I really need to rely or depend on people for help? But as time goes by, I have come to understand that this vision is becoming a large one, is be becoming big. And whether we know it or not, one person cannot fund a vision. You know, when, since when we started and now, a lot of cost has, um, has been incurred. A lot of money have gone into, you know, getting us to where we are right now. And I thank God for grace to be able to um, take it on, you know, since then till now, and the grace, you know, for provision and all of that. But I would like to encourage as many that are out there that you feel our work is touching your life, our work is blessing you in one way or the other, that you feel, oh, you want to participate, you want to support what we are doing, please do look at the screen. The, the account number is there. In case you want to support us in any way, please feel free to um, send your donations down to that account number and we would appreciate all your little, little input. And I mean, nothing is so small. And I believe that all of this will form seeds that, you know, we all are sowing towards the future of our children, towards the future of our nation, and even for the um, peace and bliss of our own home. I, I know that God is a rewarder, and he has a way of rewarding us in a special way, you know, when we give. But if you don't believe in giving, please don't feel compelled, you know, to give towards a please. Um, just continue to participate. We do appreciate everyone. So I'm going to go straight to our topic for today, which I titled, When is enough enough? When is enough enough? Hmm. This topic was actually um, coined from all of the series of uh, events that happened during the week especially on marriage clinic, all the cases we got during the week. You know, they are quite um, a pathetic one. And um, I remember that for some of the cases, in fact, for, for, for some hours in the night, I would just be thinking, Lord, what is happening? What is going on with some marriages? You know, I can't comprehend why some things happen, you know, in, in, in some of our marriages. And... You know, it was in the process of thinking, brooding over all these issues that I said, okay, so maybe we need to talk about this topic. When is enough enough? When should you tell yourself as a wife that, ah, ah, no, this is enough. All this your, all this your tantrums, all this your nagging, all these your grudges, all these things are enough. And at what point should you, the man of the home, the husband, so to say, the leader of the home should tell yourself, ah, uh ah, -uh, this is enough. Enough is enough. Because come to think of it, we are not babies. 
Marriage is not meant for babies. Marriage is for adults. And if marriage is for adults, we need to behave like one. We need to behave, you know, like adults whose conscience is alive, whose conscience is living, and whose conscience will always tell you, ah, oh, ma'am, sir, what you're doing is not right. Please do revisit your action. Do revisit the words you are speaking you know, to your spouse. Do revisit what you are doing to this, your partner. So when is enough enough? So I'm going to start by saying that enough should be enough. Eh? Tell yourself, you are going to be telling yourself, ah, ah, enough is enough. When you see that, um, when you see that you are taking your spouse as an enemy, when your spouse becomes an enemy to you, then you must learn to sit down and you should be able to define ah, how did you graduate from being lovers to being enemies? What happened? At what point did enmity, you know, enter into a love relationship that both of you now become so bitter about each other that the bitterness is so much that you could even feel it in the words of the wife or in the words of the husband, you know, you can tell that there is this strife, this strong context, uh, contention, and you are wondering, ah, is this supposed to be um, a love affair or a death affair? Now, I remember during the week, I had to make some calls to some um, couples, you know, at different times. You know, at times, I will have to call um, the wife separately. Sometimes I'll have to call the husband separately, you know, just to be sure we have the complete um, knowledge. And there was a particular case that when the wife was talking, even me, I could feel um, the negative vibrations, you know, that was coming out from her mouth. The negative vibration, I will show him that he's not the only one that has money. I will show him that he's not the only one that can build uh, houses. I, will, uh, I mean, so I kept wondering that, wow, if I, a, a third party, can be feeling, you know, this negative vibration, how much more the partner that is living under the same roof, you know, with this kind of a person. Now, when you are beginning to see your partner as an enemy, then you should really sit down and ask yourself, okay, what has gone wrong? What was it he or she did to me that made me develop this so much bitterness, this so much resentment, you know, towards this partner? What is it? You must be able to lay your hands on it. You cannot come and be telling us, oh, I don't know, you don't know, or you just keep quiet. No, you should be able to lay your fingers on it because it is when you can tell exactly what the issue is that you know people can come to your rescue or help you out or that is when even you can now tell yourself okay if this is the problem how do we resolve it how do we address it now i want you to know that when you are beginning to see your uh, uh, your spouse as an enemy as far as i'm concerned you are in fact you don't have a marriage anymore please think about it because the way god designed marriage he did not design it for people to be living together as enemies. No, he did not design it for people to be living together in strife, in enmity, you know, negative with negative energies, negative vibration, with venoms coming out of your mouth. Now, when I was preparing for this um, program, I noticed that one of the reasons why lovers can turn enemies is because of the things that you have said to each other. Now, when you started out, some of us, we started out saying sweet things. Oh, I love you without saying you, I can't sleep. Oh, you are my life. You are my breath. You are my energy. You are the wings that I used to fly. <laughs> but now, in the marriage, the song has changed. It is now, oh, hey, I, will, I will do this to you. I will destroy you. I will break you. I will show you I'm the boss. I will show you that me too. I have You know? When that is the situation, at times I ask myself, okay, so of what benefit would your union or your marriage be to your children, be to your, um, be to the society, even be to the nation? Can we say we are profiting from that kind of a relationship? Because that is a really toxic one. So 
you should be saying enough is enough when you can clearly say that ah, no this person that used to be a lover has suddenly turned an enemy then you now want to assess the relationship and ask yourself do i really want to continue like this if you cannot continue like that then it's time for both of you to make amends and if you cannot make amends see you you cannot continue to sit there and be pulling um strings and be showing bad example to your children if you have any and be creating problems for society no you can't continue like that there must be a point where you you are able to say at this point enough is enough you should be able to draw the line and address yourself and tell yourself what is the right thing for me to do to change this situation what can i do to address this issue but not that you want to continue to remain there and you want to continue pulling strings you want to continue the fight you want to continue the strife you want to continue talking bad about each other and people have, are wondering are these couples or are these um are these uh, couples or are these contenders what, what are they contending for you know so you don't want to be like that it is called marriage not a mirage a mirage is when you wake up and you're wondering ah, ah, how did i get here what happened you know marriage both of you should, should be reasonable adults you should be able to reason things together you should be able to communicate you should be able to live together in harmony when is not peaceful when is full of wars and wars and wars and the war is as a result of the fact that both of you you know are not willing to to submit or to respect each other or to to even agree on things that is when we have this endless um quarrels and endless fights but as adults you should be able to assess yourself and your marriage and tell yourself enough is enough at what point is it enough you should be able to identify it and say no i can't continue like this and you address the issue rather than keep running like that now another point again is that you should start asking yourself when is enough enough when your partner has become your competitor your competition is your partner both of you are competing ah i will show her that huh, i have the money to marry 100 wives mm, i will show him that i have what it takes to you know to have a uh, hundred husband oh i will show her that i can afford all the houses in lagos ah i will show him that i can afford all the houses in abuja i will show him that i'm also earning i will show him ah, please when it has become a competition then there is a problem because the kind of um hair that you you guys will be emitting in that kind of a marriage will be a very bad one it will be a terrible one for any child to thrive or to survive in that kind of an environment because at times i pity children you know that comes from this kind of home of from this kind of marriages because i will be thinking to myself what is going on in the mind of this child you know when a child keeps seeing their parent fighting competing you know it's like we are in a war we are in a struggle we are please we don't want to continue like that besides you guys are growing older you are not growing younger and as people grow older i want to believe that the older you get the more alive your conscience should be because your conscience should now be conscious of the fact that ah, death is a reality and a man or a woman can die at any time I mean, your conscience and uh, your your consciousness or your conscience should be alive the uh with the level of your age or as your age increases your conscience should be more alive so if your conscience cannot talk to you and tell you that ah, you are going to be a grandma very soon you cannot continue like this you're going to be a grandpa very soon you cannot continue you are a father a father is supposed to be a leader a father is supposed to be a role model a mentor you shouldn't be the one that we are now you know talking to as if we are talking to a child and telling what to do no that is why 
you need to understand this institution called marriage is not for children when you make your wife your competition now look at the example of the issue um of the wife that works in oil company and the husband works in Abeokuta. the husband is earning 200k the wife is earning uh, uh, i think two two million naira and the husband is saying oh because it is said oh i don't know where you got you know the the scriptures form of whatever he meant by it is said that it's a woman that must follow the man you are now telling the woman to leave two million naira job okay, and follow you to where you are earning two hundred thousand naira. and i'm like is it that the man does not even have the fear of God? Or is it that his conscience is not alive? Because if your conscience is alive, you will ask yourself, if this lady were to be my younger sister, would I tell my younger sister to leave a two million naira job for 200,000? No, you to look at it. Or if this person were to be your relative, your auntie, if this person were to be your daughter, would you tell her, leave two million naira job you know, for 200,000. No. So always check your conscience. Stop all this fallacy. Where did you see that it is said that a woman must be the one to follow the man? It shouldn't always be like that. You should ask yourself, what, what would be beneficial to our home? What would be beneficial to our family? Please, if we are earning 200,000, there is no way society can benefit from that. You know, you should be telling yourself that, ah, it's better we have our family income you know, in the six digit bracket, so that even more people, you can help more people, you can reach out to more people, your own immediate family will benefit from that, you know, the people around you will benefit from that, your siblings will benefit, your parents will benefit, but when you are now saying you want a whole um, six digit income to shrink to four digits, uh, then I, I ask, whether you you really have a conscience you know and someone uh, put on the platform that if the person is looking for scriptures to back it up that the person should go back and read a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife so if a if bible or scriptures can say a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife the woman said it is actually the man that should leave his job and cleave to his wife that is the truth. So you guys should stop, you know, all these uh, fallacy, traditional adages that says it is a woman that must follow the man. It depends. It is what is beneficial to us. If it is beneficial for her to follow the husband, and if society will benefit from it, your children will benefit from it, why not? But if we know that uh, uh, if she leaves this to follow her husband, they will suffer. So even society will suffer because by the time both of you are fighting, you guys will constitute, you know, another problem to the one we are already trying to address. So let us think very well as adults. When you start saying that you guys are behaving like competitors, you are competing with each other, then there is a problem. So you now need to sit yourself down and ask you, ah, ah, when would this be enough? Because you can't continue like this. You can't continue to compete with each other. It's not designed like uh, it's not designed to be like that in marriage so think about it well so another thing is another point is when is enough enough you should be able to tell yourself it is enough when you are the type that you are always holding sexual grudges sexual grudges eh? you are the type that you know you want to use sex as a called cat you want to use sex as weapon of retaliation ah i will show him <laughs> See, i i know he's still coming to meet me ah i will show her i know uh she's still coming to meet me now when you guys are beginning to you know old grudges even to issues concerning sex then there is problem because that one eh, it can even make a man break the head of a woman and it's something that can also make a woman break the head of a man because we are talking about you know a, a an emotional thing here so when you are using it as a weapon you are depriving the other person you are affecting that person mentally there's no way that partner said will enjoy his or her life when you are using um sex as um a weapon you know on them so 
as an adult, you should be able to tell yourself, ah, for how long am I going to do this for? For how long am I going to continue behaving like a baby? Holding sexual urges, uh, grudges, something that both of you should uh, have talked about or let him or her know that, see, um, I'm not having fulfillment in this area, in that area. Teach each other how to help each other, you know, fulfill your sexual life. You both are not talking about it and you'll be saying, oh, I'm waiting for him. I know he will come and meet me. I'm waiting for her. I know she will come and meet me. No, you can't continue like that. That rather than holding grudges, have that conversation, have that discussion. And if you cannot have the conversation, session, then learn how to uh, ask or learn how to talk and say, you know what, this is how I want it. This is what I want. You know, rather than making everything an issue, everything a fight, what God gave us to enjoy. We human beings, we've turned everything, we've weaponized it all, and we've made it as a tool of making other people's life miserable. At what point would you tell yourself, ah, ah, enough is enough, I must not continue like this. This is not how it is, it has been designed. So sit down, if you want sex from your partner, let them know this is what you want, I want it. And from the time you wake up in the morning, start you know, um, showing them signs that this is what you want. And not that, oh, that same partner, you've abused them very well for morning. And in the night, you're not saying, yeah, hmm, my dear, come now. Uh, oh, it cannot work like that. You must learn how to press you know, their buttons from that morning that you wake up from the bed till that time that you know you are going to be needing it. So learn how to say, ah, this is, you know, we can't keep holding these sexual grudges. We can't keep depriving each other. You must learn when to say, ah, ah, this must be, you know, we can't continue like this. It's not healthy. It's not good. It can make people grow older than their age. And it can even make people, you know, develop high blood pressure. Stop you know, all of that, they, they are childish attitude. And that is why God designed marriage for two adults, not for two babies, not for two children, not for two um, teenagers that don't know what they are doing. It's usually for adults. So please learn to know when to say enough is enough. And that enough is enough. Most times it is you talking to yourself and telling yourself, ah, ah, at this point it has to be enough, you know, and devising means on how to move forward. So I'll rush quickly because of our time. Now, another thing is um, holding, um, holding on to the past. You have a partner that offends you or has offended you, and you are still in the marriage, and you are still holding grudges of uh, 10 years ago, five years ago with that partner, and you are still in that marriage. The question we should be asking you is, if you are holding on to the past and you are saying, oh, because of what the man did in the past or what the woman did in the past, oh, I will not let him uh, touch me. I will not let him enjoy this marriage. I will not let him access the things he will ordinarily access in marriage. Then something is wrong somewhere. You Then you shouldn't be in that marriage in the first place. And you cannot continue to remain in the marriage and be telling yourself, oh, I will not forgive. I will hold on to the past. I will not forgive. I will not let him have access to what he should access. I will not let her have access to what she should access, uh, uh, access because of what she has done to me in the past. And as a result of that, you make life miserable for that partner. And you yourself will refuse you know, to leave the marriage, and you are saying, I will be in this marriage, too, but I will show this partner that they too, they will not enjoy life. Please, that is witchcraft. That is not good. That is that is witchcraft. You should not be like that. You should not be the type of a person that holds on to the past. You refuse to forgive the past. And at the same time, you are holding the future to ransom. That is not right at all see if you know that that marriage is not good for you you can excuse yourself but for you to now hold everybody involved in the marriage to ransom is a bad thing so you need to now tell yourself enough of this enough is enough i mean if you know you want the marriage then it's high time you forgive the person and let the person know that see this is what you did that is so painful i forgive you you and try not to repeat 
you know, that thing, because this is how much it pains me. But if you're not saying, oh, I will remain in the marriage and I'll continue to hold on to the grudges of the past, I'll continue to hold on to the pain of the past, and I will not allow him or her to enjoy the future, then you, you will become a witch or a wizard. Please have a rethink. You should, by now, as adults, adults should know when enough is enough and not continue, you know, all this kind of um, confused lifestyle. We don't need it anymore in marriage. We want to be able to say this is how marriage should be won and people should be in marriages, enjoying the marriages, not that they are in it and they are wondering, please, is this marriage? This cannot be marriage. So please, I don't want us to keep passing this confusion, you know, from generation to generation. And that's why Mary Clinic is taking all the pains, you know, to put out this knowledge, to invite um, renowned speakers to come talk to us. Because some of you will say, ah, it's because she's not working. That's how she, that's why she has the time to make her marriage work. Please, I want you to know that there are a million and one women out there working. And at the same time, they are making their marriage work. So stop all those excuses. It's, it's time for all of us to sit down as adults and say, ah, when is all this nonsense enough? Enough must be enough. And address yourself, address issues. So I would like to stop here because our time is far spent. We will continue during the week. All the speakers are ready for us. So please do um, invite someone who should also um, try and join um, all the program. We promise that um, they will be life-changing, they will be phenomenal. And even after this one year anniversary, as time goes on, we will be bringing remarkable speakers, and I mean remarkable, the ones that will blow your mind, that ordinarily you would not have thought that they could come you know, to any platform to even talk about their marital life, we are going to be bringing them to Marie Clinic and they will be telling us how they combined, you know, their busy life in business, you know, in um, in different industry with their marriage. And I want to believe we are going to be learning a lot from that. So I will stop here right now. Please do enjoy your week. Join us from Tuesday till Saturday. Invite someone. I remain your host, Morali, and I will put it till we meet again. Bye-bye. Thank you.